Hello, Makati. Hello, world. This is Attorney Angel, and I'm your legal angel. Hi, my fellow angels. As always, I hope that you're all staying healthy, safe, and well, and that you're not forgetting to pray. Okay, so for this vlog, um, I will share with you the slides that I uh, used for my uh, discussion or slash lecture when I was invited by the Center for Clinical Legal Education and Legal Aid Services of the University of Makati School of Law to talk about legal writing, specifically affidavit writing, and then I also had a workshop with them. So without further ado, here it is. I hope you will learn something from this. I hope that it will be useful for you. Okay, I'll be sharing my screen now. Oh, well, I'm sharing my screen. Thank you very much for your support. Please like, subscribe, share, and follow. Um, I'll wait. Not this one, the other one. I'll show you the example after we discuss the details. Okay. As I was saying, please like, subscribe, share, and follow. Um, our target now is to reach 4,000 watch hours. A or here it is. Ay, bakit yun ang palagi? Second, ta -ta -ta -ta. wait lang ha. Aha. Uh -huh. Why is it the one that is showing? Ayon. Okay, let's try again. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Okay, now Let's do it now. Yeah. Okay. So play from start. Fidavid writing workshop. So a quick view of the discussion, what will be the contents of this uh, presentation will be first, the meaning of an affidavit, what is an affidavit. Next, the parts of an affidavit. So this refers to the contents of an affidavit and some tips. Practical tips, okay, that you must remember in preparing an, affid an affidavit and um, the workshop itself. But uh, um, these are exercises that if you want to practice, you can do so in the comfort of your own home using your own gadgets. Okay, so I quoted here Ms. Ms. Lauren Pope. She said, honesty is the best policy. And when it comes to completing an affidavit, it's the only policy. Okay. Of course, we all know, napaka-importante, na honesty is the best policy. Even not just in affidavit making or affidavit rating. In everything we do, honesty is the best policy. Uh, this is a life lesson that we should carry okay, whenever we are uh, taking exams or whenever we are working, whenever we are doing research, anything that we do in everything that we do, wherever we are. And here, of course, honesty is the best policy is the main principle that you have to apply in making or writing an affidavit. Okay. Bakit? Kasi an affidavit okay, is a sworn statement. Okay. Sinusumpaan nyo at pinatototohanan nyo kung ano yung nakasulat at nakasaan sa affidavit. So in technical terms, an affidavit is a written instrument containing statement of facts signed and sworn under oath before a notary public or other officers entitled to administer oath by the person executing the same. Okay. So there are two important parties in the affidavit. The person executing the affidavit and the person to whom the affidavit is sworn before or sworn to. Okay. Important keywords here, written instrument, statement of facts, sworn under oath. Okay. Bakit ba important yung affidavit? Okay. It's important, of course, because we use it in a number of our personal transactions or everyday transactions. Okay. And it can be also required in various legal proceedings. 
So bukod sa function niya in our everyday life, meron din siyang function legally when it comes to court and legal proceedings. Okay. Nasabi ko na there are two important people or parties involved in an affidavit. The person executing, or in other words, called the affiant, or one who causes the preparation of the affidavit and who signs and swears under oath. And the other one, the person to whom the affiant or the person executing the same first before um, is the authorized officer or the notary public. Authorized officer can also be um, not the notary public, pwede rin yung mga authorized under the law to administer oath. Such as um, um, well, yung sa mga embassies, pwede yan. Okay? And their um, officials or public, elected public officials who are also authorized to administer oath. Okay? When it uh, comes to the notary public, of course, these are the lawyers with notarial commission, okay? And I already discussed authorized to administer oath, those authorized officers under the law are provided by law. So we've come now to the parts of an affidavit. Okay. Sa venue, yan yung una yung makikita sa top of the affidavit. Yan. Makikita nyo yung Republic of the Philippines tapos kung saan lugar or locality particularly ginawa yung affidavit or inexecute yung affidavit. Okay, and then you will see the SS or sometimes SC. That stands for the Silicet, which means more particularly. So kung titingnan natin ito, the venue is the Republic of the Philippines, more particularly in Makati City. Next, we have the title or the caption. Okay, so you will see there after the the silicet, after the venue, the silicet, the title or the caption, ano bang klaseng affidavit ito? So in our example, we have affidavit of laws. The title indicates what the affidavit is all about and it shows what the topic of the affidavit is all about. So in this case, this is an affidavit of laws. So may nawala, nag -e execute kayo ng affidavit of laws regarding to kung ano man yung nawalang bagay. Now, next part, the statement of identity or the personal circumstances or personal information of the affiant. So, makikita nyo doon, I, tapos yung pangalan ng affiant, tapos in a state of legal age, okay, legal age, you know that 18 and above, then civil status, whether single or married, the citizenship, okay, and then the residential address, with residence at a city of blank under oath, hereby deposed and state that. Okay. So ito na yung mga narration of facts or the statement of facts. Okay. The statement of facts, as we said, going back, honesty is the best policy. You have to be truthful with what you are narrating because these are the facts. Facts are true, diba? Truth equals facts. Okay. So in the statement of facts, you will see that it is numbered. Okay. It provides the chronological account of the details of the occurrence of events. And each fact should be one paragraph or one number. And each paragraph or each number must contain just one fact. Okay. So each paragraph containing one fact must be numbered. So makikita nyo doon, sunod-sunod, chronological, and then one fact per number. So in this example, number one, I am the registered owner of blank with registration number blank. Okay. Next, on January 2, 2021, between 10 a.m. 11 a.m., I misplaced the blank. Okay. Number three, I exerted all efforts to locate the same but I could not find or retrieve the same and these are considered lost for all intents and legal purposes. Number four, the said document was not confiscated by the authorities of the law by reason of any violation of law, ordinance, presidential decree, etc., etc. This is just an example, okay? So makikita niyo yung pagkasunod-sunod. Yung una, sinabi niya, siya yung registered owner kung anong man yung nawawala na may registration number na ganito. Sinabi niya susunod, yung pet siya yung oras kung saan nawala na ito. 
Sinabi niya sa susunod na lahat ng paraan ginawa niya, hindi niya mahanap. And then, sumunod, sinabi niya hindi naman to na-confiscate, hindi naman siya nag-violate any law, etc. And then the next part, which is also part of the body or the content, okay, and the statement of facts is what we call the statement of truth. Okay. Statement of truth again, dahil sworn under oath ito, and these are narration of facts, honesty is the best policy. So what is the statement of truth within the statement of facts? It is the affirmation of the affiant that everything stated are true and correct and based on personal knowledge. Again, true, correct, based on personal knowledge. And it also states the purpose for which the affidavit is executed. Okay. Nasabi niya yung purpose, but siya nag-execute na kay David. So in this example, it's number five, continues dun sa previous example natin. I am executing this affidavit based on my personal knowledge to attest the truth of all the above facts and secure a new copy of the aforementioned document and for whatever legal purposes this may serve. Usually, nandun yung catch-all phrase na and for whatever legal purposes this may serve. Okay, just to be sure, di ba? Nandun yung general clause at the end. But of course, you have to state the specific purpose of why you are executing this affidavit. So in this case, the, the specific or particular purpose is to secure a new cop. Kung ano man yung dokumento niyang nawala. And that, after that, you will see the attestation and the signature of the affiant. Okay? Dito makikita nyo yung words na ito. In witness whereof, I have hereunto assigned my name below this blank day of blank 2022 at the city of black. So here you will see na sinasabi niya na um, sinayin niya yung kanyang name and sinayin niya, nilagay niya yung kanyang pangalan na sinayin na niya to sa pecha sa lugar na ito. Okay, so affixing to a document, the affiant's uniquely personal, undeniable self-identification as physical evidence of personal witness and certification of the content of all the documents. Kumbaga, this seals it na lahat ng yon ay siya ay nagpapatotohanan, siya ay nagsasabi ng totoo at para kapatunayan ito, nilalagdaan niya ito. Okay, kasama ang kanyang pangalan ng kanyang lagda sa lugar at kung sa, saan, saang lugar ito ginawa at kung kailan. And then, on the part of the notary public or the person authorized by law, okay, to administer oaths, you will see the jura. Okay. The notary public or officer certifies that the instrument was sworn to before the notary public or the officer. So makikita nyo after what we have mentioned dun sa kanina, susunod doon yung subscribed and sworn to before me this blank day of blank by a client who exhibited before me his or her competent evidence of identity number blank issued on blank at the city of blank and which expires on blank. Notary public, okay. So dyan sa jurat, yun na nga, sinasabi dito, ng notary public na ito ay sinubscribe at sinumpaan sa kanya sa ganitong lugar, sa ganitong petsa at nagpakita rin ng competent evidence of identity. Okay? Um, yung of, katulad ng mga ID. Okay? Government issued ID or company ID pwede rin or yung mga magpapatunay passport. Kaya, yeah, diba? License papatunay ng iyong identity. Okay, then, it is also uh, provided there kung um, anong class yung ID mo, ano yung number ID mo, saan in-issue, kailan in-issue, and then, kung merong expiration lang, yun rin, pwede rin. But sometimes, pwede na yung issued on at yan. Okay? But, for complete um, details, you may want to include also the expiration date of the competent evidence of identity or the valid identification before it was ETC okay ngayon hindi na kailangan competent evidence of identity na hindi lang community tax certificate or cedula kailangan 
Then, of course, the notary public, the details of the notary public, and then the doc page uh, book and the theory number, and then the seal of the notary public or the officer. Okay. So some simple tips, of course, um, since the affidavit can be prepared even, even if you are not a lawyer. So make it as simple as possible. Of course, it has to be clear, organized, concise, and you put the relevant facts only. You have to be truthful. Watch out for your grammar and spelling, the format required, and of course, if there are attachments, you have to indicate the attachments as well. And then, you have to be specific, precise. Um, do not put opinions or um, beliefs because, as we said, these are narration of facts. So there is no opinion needed. Basic, put there who, what, where, when, how. Oh, so yung palang alam na. You can already um, put there chronologically. The who, the affiant, ba, what, ano yung, anong klaseng affidavit ba yan? And then, yung what kasama din doon, meron kung affidavit of loss, ano yung nawawala, where, saan nawala, when, kailan nawala, how, kung matatandaan ba, paano nawala, di ba? Etc. And then, write in first person, use tactful and plain language or plain English, no need for highfalutin words, and be consistent in your writing. Okay, so here, this is already the workshop part. So you don't need this. But if you want to, okay. So in the workshop, I divided them into groups kasi maraming participants. But if you want to practice, do it on your own. Okay, I uh, assign them different kinds of affidavits such as the affidavit of loss, affidavit of undertaking, affidavit of indigency, one and the same person or discrepancy or affidavit of and affidavit of desistance. So if you want, you can practice by doing this. Okay. So they are, they are, these are sources that may be helpful to you. You can check them out as well. Okay. I'll stop sharing because now I'll share the other one. Okay. Wait now. The one that appeared kanina. So you have an idea of how it looks like. Share screen again. Yan, yan yung ginamit natin example. Yan. So if you can see here, yan, i ano natin. How do you do it? Wait. Stop share muna. Slide show natin para mas makita niyo. Apparently, I don't know. <laughs> Natatakpan kasi kapag slideshow. Anyway, ayan. Play from the start. Ayan. So, kanina, we discussed um, the different parts. So, para mas makita nyo yung kabuhuan, ito yon. Okay. So, ito yung dinidiscuss natin kaninang venue. Then, the silly set. Okay. The venue to the Republic of the Philippines. More particularly, in Makati City. The title or the caption is Affidavit of Laws. In the first sentence, we see here the statement of personal information or personal circumstances of the affiant or the person executing the same. So the name, the legal age, the civil status, the citizenship, the residential address. And then states under oath, hereby is deposed and state that here are the statement of facts, okay, the body, the content of the affidavit. Okay, we already discussed this. This is the body from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But in number 6, okay, so so you will see here in number 1, I wait, oh, sorry. Number 1, sinasabi niya siya yung registered owner ng isang SUV with plate number black. In number two, sinabi niya yung pecha at saka yung oras na nagpunta siya, ginamit niya for easy trip card. Tapos, malapit sa Petron Gasoline Station yung, ano, yung booth sa Marilao, Bulacan, North Express Highway, and like Number three, 
Realize niya, ito yung ano, parang how na to. Sa kanina, what, okay, who, when, then where. Here is the how. I realized upon payment that I had misplaced the OR, the duplicate CR, and the TPL insurance pertaining to my SUV. Ngayon yung for circumstance kung paano niya nawala. And then, number four, also how. So, pwedeng, uh, yun na nga, how din to. Na in-exert niya yung efforts niya to locate the OR, CR, and the TPL, pero hindi niya na mahanap. Okay. Sinabi niya sa number five na hindi naman ito kinonfiscate by reason of violation of any law. And then, in number six, the statement of truth. Okay. That he executed the affidavit based on his or her personal knowledge okay, to attest to the truth of the foregoing facts. So, inapatunayan niyang katotahanan ng mga sinabi niya and anong purpose niya para mag-secure na new copies ng ORCRTPL and the general clause or the catch-all phrase for whatever legal purposes this may serve. And then, the attestation in witness whereof I have here and to sign my name below, okay, the day, the date, where, the city of Makati, Philippines, and then the name of the affiant and the signature. Okay. Hindi lang na kasama dito, oh wait, hindi lang na buo kanina sa isang page, but ito yung continuation. So here is the jurat, subscribed and sworn to before me, okay, on the day, the affiant exhibiting to me his or her Competent evidence of identity or identification issued on uh, Makati City, Philippines. Then, the notary public, the details of the notary public, doc number, page number, book number, series, of the details, which is then the seal of the notary public. Okay, stop share. So, that is for this vlog, Benjo Crash Course. But I know you can do it, and I hope you can... Uh, use this as a guide if you want to practice affidavit writing. Kasi isa sa mga useful talaga, especially for law student practitioners or those doing under, those doing internship in um government offices or law offices. Ito isa sa mga practical na talagang pinapagawa at uh, almost every day. Especially for example, if you're interning for the law department, palagi, palaging palagi ito. Okay? So, I hope you learned something from this vlog. Thank you very much for watching, for listening, and stay safe, everyone. Sorry, ng buhok ko. Stay safe, everyone. Be kind, be a blessing to others, be generous, be humble, and always remember to glorify God with a grateful heart. This is Attorney Angel and Nine Angel Angel. Bye.